Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. This week I want to show you how I created a couple of different line and wash paintings of a Tasmanian Devil. So the Tasmanian Devil is a little marsupial that is native in the wild only to the island of Tasmania. And not too many of those in the UK, like many of these animals I've been doing recently. So once again, I've used Pixabay for my reference photos. I'll show you the reference photos a little bit later on. So what I was showing you there was just the first sketch I had a go at. This is the second of the same pose of the, of the same animal. So because I'm using a Sharpie marker pen, just going straight in, no pencil, not every sketch works out ideally. So I just thought I'd show you kind of one of my failed attempts to kind of show that, that the whole process really, you know, I don't get it right first time every time by any means. Um, so here's a rather better proportioned uh, sketch of the animal kind of lying on the ground before I had the snout a little bit too long and when I show you the reference later even this you know it's not it's not a perfect representation of my reference but if I'm happy with the drawing overall as kind of an image on its own then I'll, I'll go with that so the idea of this video is that it's also episode T of the animal alphabet challenge and what's going on there is I'm working my way through the alphabet gradually and I'm drawing or painting animals that I don't normally paint. Obviously, you know, a particular animal for letter A, a particular animal for letter B, and so on. So we're at T through the alphabet. And because I'm kind of getting towards the end of that process, that kind of almost completing that collection of work, I've created a little gallery of the Animal Alphabet Challenge paintings and drawings so far uh, on my website. So I'll link that down below if you want to check out kind of a quick summary of where I am on this challenge, then you can have a look at all of the images in one place. But back to today's drawing, what I'm doing is, as you can see with the Sharpie marker pen, I've indicated some of the lines of the fur, some of the deep shadows, given the animal a little bit of an environment to occupy there with a few you know, blades of grass and a bit of a few lines on the ground. There's the original reference. Now I actually focused up just on this little animal on the right, and then I actually mirrored it, as you can see here. So I often do that if I get a free reference photo, I'll try and just tweak it a little bit so I'm not copying exactly uh, the, the, the reference photo. I don't want to replicate the photo, I just want to be inspired by it. But I'm adding some much deeper shadows in there. And then I thought, well, I'll do another version as well. So this is, uh, this one went rather better, the animal on all fours, standing on its side. Same kind of technique. So I've got this one, I've got the second one, and I thought, well, I'll tape them both to the board at the same time paint them at the same time. Why not give that a go? I haven't done that. In a, if I've done it ever before, I haven't done it in a long while. So I just used some of the paint, watercolour paint I had left on my palette from last time I used it. Applied a quick, fairly neutral background wash and then lifted off that wash while it was still wet from the animal. Applying the same technique to the second painting here. And again, I'll lift off the wash from within the animal. So it's a nice way of just getting a sweeping background tone Use a similar technique now, but with a much warmer, orangey-brown, earthy tone for the ground. And again, I don't care about painting over the drawing. The Sharpie ink isn't going anywhere. And if I'm fairly quick, I can just lift that off with the paper towel again. Now, while the background is damp, I can tease out some of those little pools of watercolour paint to create some delicate and faint twigs or branches or hedgerows in the background. Some kind of plant life anyway but it keeps things fairly subtle and subdued for the background. So that later on, when I put in stronger tones and bolder colors for the animal, that's gonna create a nice sense of depth and also a nice focus. It will keep our focus on the animal. That's my hope. So I won't show you each step for both paintings, but I am doing the, both of these in parallel. Now, the fur of the Tasmanian Devil, according to my reference photos at least, is kind of a dark brown, maybe even almost black, with the occasional patch of white. And some of the highlights, where the light's catching the animal, they're quite a deep blue. So I'm just, I've just switched to a rather smaller uh, synthetic watercolour brush, and I'm just using pure ultramarine blue to gently layer in regions where I think the light is going to catch. And now I've mixed up some crimson, permanent alizarin, with a touch of Naples yellow, and I'm just applying some of the red to the inner parts of the ears and some around the snout as well. Uh, I probably put a little bit of the blue in there as well to make it just a little bit browny. 
And you can see I'm just lifting off areas with my finger where I feel appropriate to add a little texture. And now similar technique around the lining of the eye. Uh, I added more Naples yellow there, though, just to make it a more yellowy and paler colour. And having done all of that and let it dry, what I'm doing now is applying a uh, kind of an overall co kind of cohesive, bring everything together wash. So this is mostly ultramarine blue and burnt umber with a little bit of the alizarin crimson in there. So I don't want pure black, but I want it to be nice and dark with some hints of colour in its own right. And then, of course, when that washes over some of the highlights or some of the lighter tones I've put down, I'll get some nice mixing of colour like you saw there when I went over that pale patch of, of brown. But I'm going to be careful to leave some of the highlights and some of those pale patches exposed so there are still little pops of brighter colour. So I'm going fairly, you know, working reasonably quickly, but fairly carefully as well. I'm quite happy with my drawings. I don't want to distort them too much by having the washes go too wild. But that said, if a little bit ekes out beyond the, the line work, that's OK. Now, that same colour, because it's fairly neutral, I can continue that into the cast shadow. Um, on the ground and even pop a few little details in on the ground as well. Indications of twigs, a few little lines here and there on the inner part of the ear. Really just, you know, picking out little bits, little details here and there, but not going too crazy. I want these to be light and, you know, loose, lively studies. So I apply a similar technique to the other sketch. Add a few details in on the ground. And I just felt it needed a little pop, just a gentle pop of green in, in the foliage, just to kind of complement some of the reds and the orangey browns in both paintings. So mixed up a green there with Naples yellow and ultramarine blue, applying it very lightly and loosely with the, with the brush, and then a little dash on the left hand side of the foreground. And then I'll lift off some of that again, as you can see, with the paper towel, just to soften the edges, add a little bit of random texture. So there's the first of the studies, little guy there kind of curled up on the ground. And there's the other one on all fours, the side view. So those are the two line and wash paintings, Sharpie marker pen with watercolour washes of the Tasmanian Devil. Um, I'll show you a quick glimpse of the Animal Alphabet Challenge. Uh, as far as I've got with it so far. So as I said, check that out. The link is in the description. But there we go. That's those two little uh, paintings complete. I'm looking forward to getting to the end of this challenge and see the whole collection completed. Hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.